because of that, Christina has traveled internationally across the United States as well as Europe playing the marimba. She was in the 2013 Zeltzman Marimba Festival, the 2018 Landstrom International Music Festival, and the 2018 Trin Trinidad Bay Arts and Music Festival in Northern California. But not only does she play in concerts, she also has an organization that she founded called Southern California Marimba. And there she takes her gifts beyond what she knows for her own benefit, but also teaches youth who are underserved in the area of music to open them up to another career path and another opportunity to be super creative. She is a graduate from Chapman University in percussion performance, and she also studied at the Boston Conservatory at Berkeley with a Master of Music in Marimba. Welcome, Christina. How are you doing today? I'm doing well. Thank you so much for having me. You're welcome. Um, I am excited to hear more about what you do. Um, I'm trying to decide where we should start. Should we start at the beginning of your journey? How did you okay. end up doing the marimba? Yeah, okay. Let me go back. <laughs> 15, <laughs> 17 years ago, uh, yeah. I was in sixth grade, I believe. Uh, when, no, fifth grade. Well, you know, in my elementary school years, my older sister actually played the marimba first during her middle school marching band. And that was the first time I saw xylophones, marimbas, and vibraphones being played um, as a front ensemble. And I thought that was super cool because I started with a piano background and I noticed it looked a lot like a piano keyboard. And so I thought, okay, like, you know, it seems that, you know, this could be a nice transition to play something else that's not a piano. And so I transferred over to marimba. I stopped piano lessons and I just had much <laughs> fun and I kept going ever since. <laughs> Awesome. So how how similar are those? How similar is the piano to the marimba? Mm, in terms of the key structures, it's pretty much built the same, um, except, you know, the piano has a much greater range. Um, a marimba typically, you know, if we're talking about uh, like a, a fully sized marimba, they're usually five octaves long, possibly five and a half octaves um, and the keyboard um, and the upper panel and the lower panel are overlaid um, kind of like on top and bottom uh, and so there is some physical challenge of you know reaching some of the keys and um, it can be a workout sometimes <laughs> behind the instrument so that's awesome um marimba versus a xylophone because it looks like a xylophone but with wooden pieces, but I'm mm -hmm. sure they're more different than that. Yeah, um, yeah the xylophone or you know, another word for it is balafone um, can be traced, uh, traced back to um, Africa. Um, and then, you know, some historians even say, you know, these instruments may have also come from Southeast Asia uh, many, many years ago. But yeah, over time, uh, these instruments have gone through changes as they traveled around the world. Uh, but, you know, right. I think most notably, um, some of these instruments were transported through the transatlantic slave trade. Um, and that's how they entered the Americas. Um, and so, like, if you, um, like the instrument of the marimba is, you know, considered a national treasure and instrument in Guatemala. Um, and it's an important instrument right. in parts of South America. Um, and also, you know, of course, now nowadays, just all over the world, <laughs> um, even though we're a small community, um, the marimba has gone through uh, some changes over time. Um, and, you know, we could even say it's gone through kind of a Western classical <laughs> transformation um, and adopted some um, of like the Western, the Western traditions of music and, um, and that developed into what you know, uh, what I, the instrument that I typically play on, the five octave marimba. So where would people hear marimba music? Because it's probably out there, we're just not as aware that that's the instrument we hear. Mm, 
depends on which country or continent <laughs> we're talking about, but I guess uh, I guess if we talk more about the U.S., um, you know, a lot of like these merm. I know for myself and for a lot of students, we first encounter this instrument through like possibly you know our public school programs, um, and mm -hmm. like in the front ensemble of a marching band. Um, that's kind of I know that was my first encounter um, with the marimba, and then um, you know it's um, it has a very atypical history <laughs> compared to I think other like Western classical instruments, um, and so we have you know we have quite a bit of like performer composers, you know people who uh, play on the marimba, and then they'll compose tunes um, and pieces, okay. and so um, we have a lot of. Uh, contemporary composers. Um, we sometimes also do arrangements uh, of, you know, pieces that were originally for other instruments like piano or cello, um, and then we would adapt those on the marimba and play them because we don't really have uh, that, I guess, Western <laughs> classical history, uh, like maybe, right. you know, a piano um, or a cello might. Um, but I'm mostly just talking about you know, in the U.S. in the U.S. in the current days, yeah. But of course, like in different cultures of different parts of the world, um, the marimba mean could mean um, a lot of different things. So let me ask you this. And this one is a more general question: How does someone go into music and create a sustainable career? That's really hard, <laughs> um, <laughs> and it really depends on the person. Um, I think more traditionally, if you decide to be a percussion major, then um, yeah, typically you learn to play many different kinds of instruments. Um, it makes you a versatile musician and performer. And you know, some people will go the orchestral route of maybe going to a conservatory, taking lessons and auditioning um, into an orchestra. Um, and, you know, they're very, very uh, competitive. Uh, another route is education, teaching. So maybe, you know, I want to be a band director um, or I want to teach at the university level. I want to go into academics. Um, that's another career path that people go towards. Um, and then, you know, another path is the freelance route. Um, and that is really only limited by your creativity and imagination. But um, basically, you know, as um, a sole proprietor, kind of you are your own business and it can be a combination of performing in gigs um, here and there mm -hmm. or teaching lessons, master classes, and just a combination of um, other creative pursuits. Awesome. So there's a lot more diversity than some people may have even thought about. Um, and I know you mentioned some performing and we're kind of in a, a state where the world is not open to concerts right now. So mm -hmm. how did you consider to maintain with your organization or even with your own um, your own performances in this context? Mm -hmm inevitably everything is now online and so i know for southern california marimba the nonprofit that i'm part of we you know we ha we usually plan about a year or two in advance and so of course mm -hmm. when covid hit no one was expecting that and so we kind of had to pause um, all of the live events that we were going to have and reconsider okay what are we going to do now are we going to take a break for a year or however long this is going to go on and then we thought, okay, like we're just going to transfer everything online. Um, it seems like that's the way to go. And so uh, I believe our first, yeah, our online concert was last year. Um, and we called it Resonating Voices. And we had it back in October. I um, mean, I know leading up to that concert, there were lots of modifications and changes uh, because it was our first time trying to do a concert online. Right. Um, so there were a lot of trial and errors. And, you know, when is this going to happen? Who's going to be a part of it? And, um, and so that was a really interesting challenge, but I'm glad that we were able to go through that. 
Um, and the benefit actually of having that online concert was we were able to collaborate with people from you know different parts of the world and not just locally. Um, right. And so that concert specifically, we wanted to highlight and celebrate uh, Black composers um, and also people of color. Um, and so what we said was, you know, we're going to ask, um, we're going to ask marimba performers, you know, if they want to join our concert and we'll ask them, you know, could you perform um, a piece that you know uh, by specifically a Black composer um, whose music that you really, you know, enjoy and want to play. Um, and then we sent those invitations um, to, I think there were five people total in that concert. Um, and I know like they came from everywhere, <laughs> like other states in the US and my friend from Germany um, sent in her performance oh, wow. video. And, um, and so it was just a big collaborative um, effort and you know and because it's online anybody can watch it and they can also watch it later and so that that was also a huge plus it was, it was a very special event that, it sounds really special and i think that um i've said this to a couple of other people who, who i've had the opportunity to have these conversations with is that covid helped i guess flatten the world you know, we were hmm. already able to connect more, but I don't think that people were taking as much of an advantage of it. You know, mm -hmm. I think we still kind of felt a little physically bound, even though technology was already available. And we just had to be a lot more creative over the past year of how we would actually connect. And that has really opened us up to things like that, where you could have people collaborating to do one event together, even though they're spread out across the world. And that's yes. really amazing. Yes. And I think finally, we, you know, just the whole world, we're getting used to being more like interacting online. Um, and I think, you know, like we had that even before COVID, but because we were all forced to use it more, <laughs> um, I think even as, you know, restrictions are lifted and everyone's getting their vaccines and, you know, like maybe we'll go back uh, to some things um, mm -hmm. pre COVID, but I also think maybe we'll have some kind of hybrid future of so, online and in person. I mean, so even like moments like this, why would we go back to not being able to talk to each other and not being able to share, you know, some a wonderful work that an artist does with people who may be unfamiliar with that person? Why would mm -hmm. you even want to go back to that? I think we've had, we've tapped into an opportunity for more richness. Mm -hmm. so, um, I agree. I am going to share one of your pieces for those who may still be sitting there going what is a marimba or oh, i really want to hear her <laughs> christina has shared some of her work with me that i am going to share with you so enjoy do you want to set this up do we need to set this up how do we no i mean like is there anything you want to say about it before i play it oh <laughs> um i can <laughs> This, uh, this piece is called Back in Business by Keegan Fountain. Um, and yeah, I, I got to, I guess, meet him virtually. <laughs> we never met in person. <laughs> uh, but he was actually one of our featured composers um, in our Resonating Voices concert. And, uh, and then I kind of like looked through his music and I really liked his works. And I was like, oh, I, I really want to play one of your pieces. And uh, so this piece came to mind. Awesome. Yeah.
awesome. I've listened to that so many times. <laughs> <laughs> the tone is getting in my head. I really enjoyed that. Oh, thank you. It's a fun and groovy piece. <laughs> it is. It's kind of jazzy. I like it. <laughs> mm -hmm. Thank you so much for sharing that with us. Um, and you have something else that's coming up that people need to watch, right? Um, an upcoming event? Yes, you have. Oh, for event. Southern California Marimba? <gasps> yes. Uh, we are going to have our international artist competition. Um, it's a marimba competition that we are planning to host once every two years. And we had our first marimba competition back in 2019. And we are so happy to do it again this summer. Um, it's going to happen in the month of June. And we are very lucky that we can still have this event online um, so that, you know, everyone from all parts of the world can tune in. Yes, and I am looking forward to it. And I'm glad that it's going to be online because I don't have to try to get to California to watch it because I don't yeah. know California would be open at that point. But <sighs> we don't have to do that. We can all sit at our computers and enjoy it and share it out and you know learn about music that we may not have heard before, learn about composers and artists that we may have never seen. And it's just really amazing. Um, and what's even funnier, which I shouldn't say is funny, but doing this has made me have conversations with people and see all these possible intersections. Like we could have very well been in Boston at the same time. Mm. When you were in Berkeley, I was at Emerson College, um, which is not that far mm -hmm. from uh, the conservatory. And we kind of jokingly, I jokingly said that I do not miss winters and Christina actually still does Dude. but I don't miss the cold I don't miss the nor'easter because snow falling in your face sideways does not feel good <laughs> <laughs> I think but it's I because I'm from... <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh it might be because I've lived most of my life in California and snow is still a very new and foreign concept where I live <laughs> I can understand that. I, I didn't get much snow going up because it very rarely happened here. You know, it's, if it's in the forecast, everybody stays at home. Because uh -huh. you <laughs> driving in it. Um, but I do miss the concerts in the park. I oh. really do miss that. Yes, because um, in Boston, for those who don't know, they have concerts all summer they do a, a summer concert series and you can just take your food go sit out in the park and listen to some very awesome music with the charles in the background um and it's very picturesque but it's just a, a wonderful community offering and it's a nice gathering place and you get a, a chance to hear music that you might not normally hear even you know, the boston pops come out it's just a wonderful mm -hmm. experience and music is so vastly important to just the tapestry of our culture. And I don't think that we're always even aware of the role that it plays in, you know, in our emotions. We hear it in our films and television. And I don't think that we even realize it because it's not always at the forefront. But even for those of us who just simply get in, in the car, we're listening to the radio, you know, there's music on our phones and we're surrounded by it all the time, even if we're just standing in an elevator. And it is people who have committed to composing and performing that give us so much. So I greatly appreciate what you do and uh, what you're teaching the next generation to do. It is so important. And I don't think that we always, um, we as a culture always give the arts the applaud that it deserves. Mm. So um, thank you. Thank you for oh, thank uh, you. choosing this as your career path. I think it's fantastic. And I'm glad that that you and your team had enough forethought to say, you know, we're not going to sit until things go back to what, the way they were. Mm -hmm. But we're going to share our gifts, even if the way that we share them is a little bit different. Mm -hmm. um, so during my time at in Boston, 
my main focus was visual effects. Like that was why I was there. That's why I went to Boston to go to Emerson to study that. And during that time, you know, technology in this shaping it was just coming on and social media was just starting. You know, I was in that group that was like, oh my God, what's Napster? Which doesn't even exist anymore. But <laughs> um, <laughs> I was in that that pod of, of college students. And the place that technology is now is really amazing. We thought it was so cool that we could share audio files of proprietary music. And now we're actually being able to sit and talk with artists and have these conversations and share, even if we're not in the same space. And one of the things that I, I hope that Unbound Creatives does is give people an opportunity to share their stories, but also to leverage some of this technology that we have, mm -hmm. like um, taking advantage of what's happening on the social media platforms so that you get your message out a little bit further. And sometimes it's just the little tweaks of using your hashtags or mentioning the organization that you're with when you're writing out your text uh, making sure that you don't just write a post about your event, but also create an event for it, because there are just some things that um, platforms like Facebook that Facebook just really likes. It really likes interactivity. So the more points of interactivity you give a person, the more that Facebook will actually share it out with your network. Mm. And so there are all these little nuances that can be utilized. Mm -hmm. that really aren't a size, but can be the very foundation of the marketing for the awesome organizations that people like you lead. And so if there's any way that I can help you in that area, feel free to ask me <laughs> any questions. <laughs> if I do it, I will answer it. If I don't, um, I'm kind of, um, I'm one of those people who loves to learn. I will find the answer because it's going to bother me. <laughs> <until> <laughs> <I do. laughs> oh. <laughs> wow oh thank you so much <laughs> for your kind words and i just really you know appreciate you know, what you were saying how of we you know we, that we appreciate the arts and music and the people who are creating um, this music and art and I am also in the back of my head, I'm thinking, you know, not a lot of people know what a marimba is and what we do and mm -hmm. how do we kind of get the word out <laughs> and just let people know we exist and <laughs> here, you know, we're just sharing our music and our lives and yeah, just having people join. So one day <laughs> I, wonder, I might ask you some questions about that, of, Absolutely. you know, reaching out to, yeah, all like, all different kinds of audiences. Yeah. So before our time is up, I have a question for you. Yes. What is the greatest lesson that you have learned on this path? Oh my goodness. <laughs> That's a big question. What is the biggest thing I learned? Oh, that means I have to sort through all the things I learned and pick one. <laughs> well, you can give more than one if that helps. <laughs> <laughs> um, recently, I've been learning that um, I think since we're young, uh, at a young age and in the conservatory, we are really pushed to practice in the practice room and, mm -hmm. you know, like hone your technique, your artistry. You must practice an X number of hours every day, build the discipline, like, there's a lot of that. And, you know, I totally understand <laughs> why we need that. And like, it's especially important, like when you're young to take full advantage. Um, and as I get older, uh, what I'm realizing is, you know, on top of that discipline and the practice, um, I think it's also really important to be connected with our times and our society and know what's going on outside of our practice room. Um, and that's something um, I'm learning more and more as I get older. And it's something that I want to encourage, I think, any artist um, or even like, especially students today is, you know, like the technique and the practice that we're honing 
um, inside our practice room, you know, we are going to apply that someday in practice um, in our careers mm -hmm. and in the recital halls. And we can, and it's a really powerful tool to connect with our audiences. Um, and I think, you know, it's also a question we need to be asking ourselves of, you know, what kind of message do I want to communicate um, with my audience? Um, what do I believe? You know, what is my philosophy in life and the arts? I think yeah. all of that matters and shapes your identity and how you present your music to the world. Um, and yeah, that's something I'm still learning. This is awesome. See, that's a great thing to have learned. Well, thank you so much for your time. Um, thank you to those who logged in and joined in this conversation. Feel free to share it out and uh, allow other people to meet Christina and learn about the marimba. Whether they're interested in music as a career path or not, um, just the sharing of her talents and gifts is a blessing that you should pass along. And for those of you who are interested, don't forget to go and like SC Marimba's page on Facebook as well as Instagram. They do have a concert coming up and you don't want to miss these international artists sharing their gifts and talents with the world. Thanks everybody for your time. Thank and you. Next week, oh, you're welcome. <laughs> you're welcome. It's been a lot of fun. I'm glad you were able to do this. Um, next week, I'll be talking to another disciple. It will be uh, Sheila Spencer. And she is a spoken word artist as well as um, an author. And she is going to share parts of her journey with us next week. Thank you so much for tuning in. And I will see you guys next Saturday.